on trying to establish that. But anyway, um, <clears throat> so as you, there are five reasons in schools why the culture and climate's bad. Number one is student misbehavior. You know, when you lose 30 days a year of instruction because of student misbehavior, that's bad. Number two, all humans have five basic needs. Now, explain that. Okay. Um, have you ever heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's strictly education related, and, I, and I've taken that and modified it. Number one, and I I went back. I started with Nietzsche, the great philosopher, nineteenth century philosopher, agnostic too. I started with him, and he said people behave the way they do because they want power. And books have been written about that. Moby Dick's probably the most famous one. Power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts. Uh, Heart of Darkness is another one where absolute power corrupts. Um, <clears throat> people want power. And the two f the philosophers before him said, yeah, but people want to be happy. Moments of happiness. Without moments of happiness, life is no good. And before that, early 18th century, somebody came along and said, people behave the way they do because they want to live. They want to be freedom from stress. They don't want to fear for their life and so forth. So that's what causes people to behave the way they do. So we got fear, freedom from stress, life itself, moments of happiness, and power. Okay. Now when you think about power, just think about today's typical political environment. You got Trump and Congress and they're trying to get um, the Secretary of State appointed. The whole thing's about control and power. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You look at Syria, it's all about control and power. You look at North Korea, it's all about control and power. You look at Iran, it's all about control and power. And everywhere across the world, China. It's all about control and power. Do you agree with that? Oh, I do. And you know what? It starts right at school. I mean, even the students. Oh, yeah. You got stu certain students that want to control yeah. other students. You got certain yeah. You got certain teachers, for example, that yeah. uh, they're the same way. They want to control the students to the point where uh, they make it un uh, un uh, interesting for the student, you know, to even want to be in that class. I yeah. mean, you know, uh, it, it, it it was bad. I had when I went to school, I had one teacher. Uh, he uh, came from, uh, I think, Hungary or Czechoslovakia. You know, when they had the Iron Curtain up, and you know what? Uh, there was one kid that knew how to manipulate him, and it was social study class. And hmm. the, the kid would bring up, you know, how he would go, Mister Bender, how did you get out of uh, such and such? You know what? The whole class change it was all about that the problem with that was it was four and a half days a week of that or actually we had the class every other day so i basically every time you went in the class i sat there the whole year and i go about the only thing i knew is how he escaped with his family you know i didn't <laughs> learn nothing in the whole class the whole year nothing well you know kids are very manipulative you know um i was the class clown I was five foot four, weighed 125 pounds as a high school senior. Everybody waited to see what I was going to do. And I could manipulate the teachers, uh, and did. But anyway, what you, what you just said is so true, uh, that what goes on in the classroom. How did we get off on that? I was talking I don't, about... I know about Korea and all that. Oh, we were talking about the five basic needs. Yeah, the five okay. basic needs, yes. Okay. The, the fourth need is caring. Uh, and ask yourself, Gary, what would it be like if you woke up tomorrow and realized that nobody in this world cared about you as a person? How would that feel? I would not feel very good. I wouldn't have no self-esteem at all. No, no. Caring 
is a very important need that all kids have, that all humans have. And many kids go to school believing the teachers don't care. When I interviewed all the kids in West Virginia, I said, what do you like about your school? And they said, the teachers. I said, what don't you like about your school? And they said, the teachers. <laughs> I said, well, tell me about that. And they said, well, we've got some of these teachers. They care about us. They want us to learn. They'll listen to us. We can go to them anytime we want, and we know they are there for us. And then we've got these other teachers that come into our classroom with their cup of coffee. They prop their feet up on their desk, and they look at us, and they say, all right, you guys, I'm your teacher. If you're here to learn, we're going to get along just fine. If you don't want to learn, that's your problem. Oh, yeah. They don't care. They don't care about us. And, you know, when I think back on my high school career, I played hooky at least once a, once a month. Fish, I went fishing. <laughs> uh, I did. I really did. Um, I was a four-year woodshop, four-year ag, four-year vocal music major, and never took a book home, ever. And here I am with a doctor degree today. Well, you know, I, I, I just going to me, the, my last year of high school, okay, actually 11th grade, I started hanging around with the wrong people. And honestly, I, I probably would go to school, go in the morning to, uh, you know, homeroom, and maybe at the end of the day I would show back up. But I cut, and I don't know how many times I cut. I mean, I was never at school, right? They, no kidding. And I should have never graduated. But you know what they did at the end of the year? In fact, I, I, I used psychology on the principal and the counselors. They would say, we're going to suspend you because you've been cutting school, right? And that means you're going to have to be here another, you know, an extra year. And I go, well, no, I don't care. I'm going to quit. You're going to what? I'm going to quit. The first thing you know, they're they're sitting there trying to talk me out of quitting the school, and the next yeah, thing that, that was yeah, that the, was a black that was a black mark on them. Yeah, to have you quit? Yeah, and then, but the next thing I know, I, gee, I made it out of eleventh grade, and then I made it out of twelfth grade, and it was like, you know, and and I don't know if the schools are like that now. That was like in you know like oh, absolutely. 68, the graduation, 69. the graduation rate is one of the things that uh, uh, schools get ranked on. What's their graduation rate? 70%, 80%, 90%, you know, and so forth. But, yeah, a lot of the kids uh, in the ninth grade quit because they don't like going to school. You know, they're 16. The law doesn't require them to go anymore and so forth. Um, <clears throat> so I decided to write this book. What would? How could you create a school in one semester where kids and teachers love to go to school? And that's what the book's all about. And it's on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble. And uh, um, <clears throat> I'm having some success with it, but not pe the people who run schools don't like the change. They want to do it the same old way. They've always done it for the past 60 years. But anyway. Yeah, uh, and that, and that's the bad. Fourth, that's the bad. The fourth need. The fourth, the fifth need is purpose. And when I asked the kids at, in West Virginia, why do you go to school? And they said, well, the law says we have to go. I said, you mean if you didn't have to go, you wouldn't go? No, I don't like school. I said, what do you like about school? And they said, going home, recess, uh, getting on the bus, um, most of the kids, 50%, don't like going to school. And, and it's tragic that uh, schools today in the United States are such that many of the kids don't want to go. They're not motivated. They have no purpose. They believe the teachers don't care. They think the other kids don't care. They have no control over what happens in that classroom the rules are there um, and you know when I was a teacher I went to the kids and I said what do you expect of me as your teacher I gave them control the next thing I did was I said what rules do you want in this classroom and they said you want us to tell you what the rules are I said, yeah I want to know what you think the rules ought to be here and they're going to give me the same rules I have 
uh, with one exception, they don't want to turn in their homework on time, so I just put it in. <laughs> uh, but when I put the rules up on the board, the kids in my classroom look at the rules and they say, oh, I wrote that rule. I wrote that rule. Oh, there's my rule. There's my rule. All around the classroom, the kids see their rules. So now when rules are broken, whose rules are they breaking? Their own. Their own. Who's working for the kids? Me. Yeah. I'm their servant. I mean, the, the, the atmosphere in that classroom versus 95% of the classrooms across the United States, if you were to ask the kids, who are you working for? And they're saying the teacher. Yeah, they should but be working for themselves. Co- huh? They should be working for themselves for education. Yeah. Yeah, they are. But the teacher, when I was the teacher, I was working for them. I was their servant. Um, and throughout the two books I've written, servant leadership is the, the theme, okay? As opposed to self-serving leadership. It's a, The problem with our schools today is we're turning out kids who are self-serving. There's a what's-in-it-for-me mentality with these kids that graduate. They take a job because what's in it for me? And, and I, there's, I, I can't argue with that because you have to serve self before you can serve others. Does that make sense? It, it does. Yeah. But the crazy thing is the kids that we graduate are so self-serving. They're so into themselves that the greater society is not something they think about and what is their role in the community. It isn't until they become parents and somewhere down the road and they got a house and so forth that they start thinking about being a good citizen. My two books I call the citizenship school. I want to turn out students who are good citizens, um, who have 12 years of opportunities to help each other. Um, that's chapter one and book one. How do you create an environment where kids help each other? Um, we don't have a lot of time to go into all that, but uh, where would you like to go from here with this? Well, I, I I will say one thing, deviating a little bit. If you go into a lot of other countries, they look at education as very, very important, but they get the yeah. kids involved into it. And then there's some like school districts, like in the UK, for example, right? They they take a certain batch of kids, and they the, the kids that they feel that could not make it through normal school. So it, it, when they get into like their last couple of years of school, they put them into training for a job. When they leave, yeah. they got they can go out and be an auto mechanic, or they can do uh, you know anything, you know like yeah. Uh, Germany Germany was probably the best at that. They had. A- a two-track system, and the United States for a long time had a vocational school and an academic school, and uh, um, so kids could choose a vocation in their sophomore year and go to the vocational school. Ohio had vocational schools, and when I was superintendent, we had buses where we would run our students to the vocational school 30 miles away to pick up a trade, and that that is a great thing. But um, that has fallen off here of late, and everything is focused more on the academics and not the vocational. But, um, yeah, there are a lot of... I mean, I had a plumber do a job for me, and you know what he charged me? $130 an hour. Oh, yeah. Wow! Yeah. <laughs> You know, there's 2,080 work hours in a year. You know how much $130 an hour times 2,000 hours? Yeah, I think I, I was talking to my one of my doctors back here, gee, about a year ago, and he was talking about, you know, some of the electricians and plumbers actually make more money a year than he does. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's, uh, you know, the academics uh, versus skills. 